This is the Miguron Knives Acri. Uh, it's a knife on loan to me from Hero Sticks, a good buddy of the channel, good friend of the channel. Thank you, Hero. I appreciate your getting all these awesome knives in my hands to try out. If I were to buy each knife that I wanted to check out, I'd be a, I'd be a poor man. So uh, I really do appreciate it. Uh, this knife, my first impression of this, uh, not being much of a Miguron lover, like I don't, I, I've experienced one of their knives. I liked it, recognized the quality, it just wasn't for me. And that's kind of how I characterize their designs in general. Um, excellent ex execution, but just just not for me. This one might be the Miguron that I put that I buy for my collection because. I think it is a very beautiful and elegant knife. It's obviously 100% modern with its front flipper and uh, modern materials and everything, but just the shape of this handle and the shape of this, the whole shape of this thing reminds me of some sort of traditional knife. Now, not any one in particular, but it looks like uh, it's it's got a blended spirit of the patata and the navaja and other kind of um, European, peasant knives. It, it, I don't know why it has that vibe to me. This looks like a horn. Maybe it looks like it's horn shaped to me. Um, but so that's a totally personal thing. But to me, this design is so beautiful because it's simple, clean, and it to me, it evokes uh, some traditional pocket knives in, in, a, in a weird way, but traditional European pocket knives, not like your American slip joints. Um, yeah. Very, very nice knife. This thing is only $50. Uh, that's the other reason why I might get this because not being so crazy about uh, the brand in general, uh, why would I, and, but wanting to have one because I, I like the, the quality, uh, this might just be the one. Um, you've got a sculpted, that's titanium pocket clip. You've got um, very nicely contoured G10. And then you have very heavily skeletonized, weight-relieved liners, steel liners. Uh, nice lock bar, but zero access to it unless you just wedge your thumb in there. I am not crazy about that. In general, I am not crazy about that because I end up using the corner of my thumbnail, and then the corner of my thumbnail uh, gets a divot in it, and you know. And I really pride myself on my awesome fingernails. Just kidding. Uh, but I'm not crazy about that sort of way. Uh, you know, they, they uh, it might break up this super clean, gorgeous design, but you know, maybe a little, a little something there, a little, little more access, but um, not a deal breaker for me. I like that it's very unmarked, except, except the blades. Oh no, wait, DC fifty three. I guess that's the uh, the model number. This is fourteen C twenty eight N, according to the website. Um, what was I saying? Oh, I like how it's uh, unmarked, except for the pivot. I think that's a classy way of doing it. A lot of companies do it that way now. And I appreciate that because there's something nice about just looking at a totally unmolested blade um, and, and not having uh, billboarding kind of spoil the lines. The only knives I really actually genuinely actively love the billboarding on are Emerson knives and Microtech knives. Those big kind of old school tactical logos in the middle of the blade, they still give me a rush. But on the whole, especially a knife this beautiful and clean, I don't want to see anything on that blade. So this is a nice central point to put that and it's a, a subtle kind of looking logo and I just think it's a good way of doing it. Uh, I have not, oh, and by the way, on this blade, well, let's talk about this blade, 14C28N. Uh, you've got a nice, long, slender drop point, very attractive drop point to me. And then that swedge at the tip gives you sort of a diamond. So you'll be able to, let me see if I can get that to focus. You'll be able to puncture things very nicely uh, with this tip. But when you look at it from the, from the dorsal aspect, it's got a lot of, it's got some meat behind the tip. It's not like a Yojimbo or something like that where you have to be uh, concerned with the delicate nature of the tip. Also, I do like how um, the tip is oriented. Uh, I'm looking at this back screw and the um, pivot and the tip and they're all in a line. And so that means if you're using it for thrusting, whatever sort of thrusting you might be using it for, no matter how your blade is oriented, you know where that point is gonna be. I like that. And then also if you're using this in a, 
in an application like this, you're cutting out paper, any sort of utility draw cut, the tip is is presented low enough. You don't have to be canting your wrist, uh, your wrist, to get the tip to to work uh, in those kind of draw cuts. So uh, very nice design. I also think this sort of slight curvature of the handle gives you some of that, especially if you hold it in a saber grip further back, you're gonna get that tip a little bit lower. So, and then the further you come up, the more control you have of the of this part of the edge and the more you can come up and use the tip like that. Uh, nice smooth action, not overly smooth. Well, yes it is. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry, this is overly smooth. The Towser K is overly smooth. Uh, meaning like it will bite you. <laughs> this one just falls shut nicely and calmly. Uh, oh, sorry. You got to get it past the detent ball and then it just drops shut. Very nice. Um, I, I do like this and I see from their website, they have a number of different options, uh, coated blade with black, all kind of blacked out. Um, I saw that they had, um, the Jade G10 and others. Uh, this would be a cool one to see in wood. I'm not sure if they make this in wood, but this might be one that I would buy in wood um, for some of that traditional thing I was talking about uh, before. Let me show it off with a couple of knives for comparison. Uh, here it is size comparison wise with the uh, PM2 and with uh, the three inch Delica, in this case, serrated Warncliffe with titanium handles. Uh, so kind of uh, bigger than both of them, actually. A little bit longer blade at 3.75 inches. Uh, the website says 3.5, but I... one, two, three, and there's 3.5. And let me get this right up to the line. That's 3.75. So they got their measurements wrong. <laughs> uh, so I want to show it with a couple of knives that uh, sort of fit the category to me. First, uh, in terms of front flipper, you have that. And uh, this is the Arcona Nettle designed by Ivan Braganetz, and the blades kind of remind me of one another a little bit, though this broadens out a bit, um, but also that front flipper. And then this is another front flipper. This is the, uh, this is the Sencut Bronte, and uh, it's, I, I do not have uh, a lot of uh, front flippers, so I wanted to show it with other front flippers. I'm not sure if you can hear my daughters uh, singing in the background, but they're jamming out to something. Uh, now, let me show it to you with knives that embody the spirit of this. One of them, to me, this, I don't know, to me, they, they kind of fit on the same page, even though this is a much more complicated design, you know, a lot more elements, a lot more visual notes. Uh, but the curve of the handle, the sort of old style, bla this, this blade, this double peaked old style Bowie blade, uh, something about this, and maybe this micarta helps, um, reminds me of an older style design. Um, and then this one, uh, the Civivi uh, Asticus, uh, embodies sort of the simplicity of this. So so the, to me, this one r reminds me of the old school nature of this. And this one reminds me of this is modern nature. Uh, I don't know if that makes any sense. But here's another uh, uh, logo right on the pivot and then leave everything else clean. Love that. Uh, this is a great knife and also can be had for uh, a relatively uh, small amount of money. Um, big differences here, though, are in the blade grind. Here it is super thin and hollow. I mean, geez, man, you could sharpen very high up on this blade year after year and still have a sharp blade. This one does come to a much more of a, um, by comparison, a much more uh, oblique geometry behind the edge. But still, as I showed with the paper, Pretty sharp. Uh, I don't think Hero Sticks put an edge on this or has done anything with that edge, so I'm pretty sure that's factory. Um, yeah. So those are the knives that kind of, you know, I like to do knife comparisons because it's not just size but spirit. I like to compare uh, knives that embody a similar spirit or a, or a similar look. Anyway, so this is the Migron Acri and I hope they make it in wood. I got to do a little more research because I, I might be uh, apt to buy this one for $50. This is a steal. I cannot believe that this knife is 50 bucks. Um, it's amazing what you can get for $50 now. And then it's also amazing to see what some people are charging $50 for. It's like, yo, sometimes you just want to point 
companies in the direction of companies like this and say, well, they're doing it for 50 bucks and they're also building it in China. So why is it, uh, why is it that your knife, um, which is much lesser in design and materials and made in China, just like this one costing so much more. So I don't know, there, there's a weird evening out um, that's gotta happen, I think, with all these OEMs. Um, and I don't, I'm not exactly sure what I mean by that. So I'm gonna leave it right there. This thing is pretty awesome. <clears throat> having not used it, but having thumbed it and held it and examined it quite a bit, I would say this is a pretty um, great example of a Migueron knife. If you're interested in the brand and you want to go with one of their lower end, so to speak, starter um, knives, this one is awesome. And if you have any interest in front flippers but uh, don't know where to start, this is also one I would recommend because um, it works well. They really nailed the um, this, the front flipper setup with the tight, sharp jimping coming around and uh, giving the handle a nice path for your thumb to follow. So there you go, Migaron Acri. Thanks for watching.